Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions. <laughs> I forgot how to say episode. Uh, we're going to wrap up today with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from a person from Germany. Hello, Brian. Please enjoy the electroacoustic band Dizob. Dizob. I don't know how to pronounce that. When I tried to find an interview or something online, that's a really tough name to search. Um, they're from Ukraine and the live performance of Six Eight the Avalanches in the Rye. All right, let's uh, dig into this. See what's going on. I immediately see we have a violin here in our thumbnail, so I'm curious where the electro part comes into this. But let's dive in and see what they have in store for us today. So we have uh, cello, violin, drums, oboe, and bassoon. Okay, <laughs> it went from a very texture, atmospheric, very interpretive, to something very fun. We have melody here, call and response. Oh, of course, now that I catch on the pattern, they decide not to do it. I see how it is. There's a fun little bit of darkness to this, though. Mystery? Intrigue? It's got very, like, creeping through a dark apartment vibes. Very intense, something's on the line. Got to get the wub wub in there. Got that metric metric modulation on the wub too. Very fun rhythmic layering. Beautiful. Cello out, well, was outlining the, uh, the chords a little bit. Then we had two moving melodies on top of that and some ornamental stuff. <laughs> a little bit of a breakbeat dance going on. I'm down for that. Interesting way of stopping the cymbals. I mean, they're closed. They're already going to be muted. 
but it seemed like he hit it and then held the stick down on it to really ensure that the symbol didn't vibrate from that final hit. Have we checked this group out before? Doesn't look like it. At least we haven't done a full reaction to it, uh, to them. I ask because I quite enjoyed that and I vaguely remember doing some sort of uh, electronic classical stuff in the past, but you know, I, we've listened to so much music, I have no idea <laughs> all of it that I've listened to. There's, Oh, man. But anyways, uh, I definitely think I need to listen to more of that. I quite enjoyed it. I, I do think it's going to take a couple of listens, though. It is incredibly dense for how short it is. I do like bringing the, the song back full circle. We have a bit of a linear playing from section to section, and then at our penultimate moment, we find a way to wrap that back into, I think it was our second or third section, um, to kind of pull back this idea and be like, okay, you know, this has been a linear journey, but we also want to have it all mean something collectively. And so we're going to bring some ideas back from the past. And I dig that. I think that's just really strong writing. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's start at the beginning. I was I was a little worried about this. <laughs> it's a rough beginning. We have a breakbeat going on underneath everything. Above that, we have all five instruments, I think, sort of just doing their own things. A couple notes here, a few notes there, one note there, a couple back over there. And then it, it sounded like a room warming up for a second. And then we started to get some longer held out notes, which felt foundational in some way. But the chord progressions were awkward. They hadn't quite solidified into anything yet. It's almost as if the song was forming, starting out as a single-celled organism and evolving into something more complex until the end result began to take form and we began to hear melodies and harmonies, chord progressions. The only thing that really felt stable at the beginning was the electronic beat. But as we moved into that second section, we began to stabilize these ideas into the typical uh, roles that we would hear in music. So we did have something foundational. I believe it was the cello giving us uh, chords, uh, outlining chords rising and falling notes that would showcase what kind of chord we were currently in, moving along that idea across the progressions itself. Um, we had melodic ideas. We had counterpoint. Um, and everything about this kind of retain some of that more textural atmospheric stuff just allowing us to feel more of a groove present here introducing rhythmic ideas because we sort of had this component in the beginning where there's a lot of sparse rhythms like I mentioned a note here two notes there a few there and we began to grow into these longer held out ideas and it becomes very textural very atmospheric what does this feel like what kind of atmosphere are we in? But when we move to that first main section, we bring back the rhythm, the, the syncopation and the sharp, jagged rhythms we had from the beginning in a way that just makes sense now. And so we do have all these layered rhythmic ideas alongside the foundational stuff from the cello, giving us our harmonies. We have melodies within the rhythmic syncopation. Um, instruments are being rhythmically interesting while also choosing different pitches to go along between. And we have multiple of those going on. So we have this harmony and counterpoint stuff going on. It is a wildly evocative beginning of a song. Just the growth from avant-garde noise into texture into multiple layered very deep writing i absolutely love that growth from nothing to everything 
it, uh, it's such a fantastic movement, and it makes me want to dig into more of their works because it isn't just a, a rhythmically odd intro and then a cool groovy section. Like, it all tells a story. It, it moves into each other, and it's just so well done that, at least to me, there is a lot of intention behind it. There was an idea that was on paper and they're like, we need to try this. And then they execute on it in probably one of the highest fashions. Um, it's just remarkable. The first minute and a half or so of this song. And like I said, it started a bit rough for me. I was like, ugh. And you know, I didn't really get a genre for this. The requester just said that they were electroacoustic. And when I heard that, I was like, well, this is going to be a rough listen. Four minutes of avant-garde, noisy stuff. And no, that was just the framework to get into the song. And the storytelling there is just magnificent. I absolutely love that. Um, and then, of course, after this moment, we sort of just continue in this idea. We, we reutilize the roles idea where we tend to have one or two instruments doing harmony usually an instrument doing rhythmic stuff. The drums typically held on to that, but we also had the uh, electronic thing going on as well, the, the electronic beat, and then either a melody or two melodies, sometimes with some harmony in there as well, um, and shifting between more atmospherically driven, longer held out sections, and more rhythmically driven, groovier sections that focus more on melody. We do hear quite a few executions on these ideas but generally speaking i think any of the sections could be grouped into one of those two styles um and it's really cool how they can continue to evolve their sound across different uh, slightly different keys that we move through and um just kind of changing who has the focus in any of the sections like i said if you break it all down into core components you'll find a lot of of repeated ideas and motifs throughout here but when you actually listen to what's going on each section is wildly different I really love that that they can craft so many different sounds out of the same building blocks it's just very cool now we do have one section it stands out to me because it feels more classical than anything else it gets rid of the electronic drum sound. The drum player also quits playing, and we enter into something that feels a bit more conversational, in that all the instruments seem to be playing off of one another. There aren't really roles in this section. It's the one time that I think we have a strong deviation of, of, of writing, of composition, where all four of our instruments the bassoon the oboe the violin and the cello are all intermingling it's it's all a type of it's not call and response but none of the ideas really make sense in and of themselves they all make sense when you listen to the whole but it's not really a hocket either it's just incomplete phrases and ideas they're okay on their own they're very weak though but when it comes together, all four of these parts form something that is fantastic to listen to. It's about how the spotlight continues to get shifted around. The reason that these ideas wouldn't work so well solo is because they have a core idea that you certainly want to be listening to, but that only takes up a portion of what they're playing. The rest of it is going to be supportive in some way, and the spotlight's going to shift to something else, and you, the listener, are probably going to be bouncing around, maybe subconsciously, between all of these as you pick up the core idea, and it's what makes the whole section drive forward. It is wonderful multi-part writing where everybody is foundation, everybody is harmony, everybody is melody. It's just rotating around so quickly. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it just sounds wonderful. And I, like I said, I need to listen to it again. This is one of the more complex sections in the track. And I only have a cursory understanding of what was going on with it. But just listen to it. I'm surprised if I go back and look at my reaction. I'll be surprised if my jaw isn't on the floor. 
if I haven't stopped moving because I'm concentrating more on it than I have for anything else in the song. Because a lot of this is just, it's very dancey. You just want to groove with it. It has great um, rhythmic elements, um, but there's so much depth to it. And then this part, they kind of get rid of some of those dancier aspects and focus on that complexity in such a good way. Um, I highly recommend, I mean, go listen to the whole song again. It's four minutes long, but definitely give that section a listen. It was either the penultimate section or third from the ending, something like that. It's close to the end of the track, though, probably about three minutes in. And yeah, that was just so good. Now, to me, the elephant in the room is the drums. They don't really do much for me. There's some really nice technique. I love the gracefulness of it. There's a lot of really light uh, drum usage, very dexterous uh, playing of the kit. But nothing in it really goes beyond the electronic drum beat that we already have. Some of it embellishes on it a little bit, but those could also have been done in the kit so I mean in the uh, the electronic drum kit so uh, I don't know maybe I just need to listen to a different song maybe this one was purposefully designed to highlight the four melodic instruments but every time I, I listen to the drums I was like yeah I mean this is good but it's not really adding much it, it feels complementary to the electronic drums and so I'm curious for everybody else sits on that how do you feel about the acoustic drum kit do you feel it's necessary when we already have the break beats going on on the electronic side do you think maybe we should have got rid of the electronic aspect and replicated those beats on the drum kit the ones that could be replicated there are some more complex ideas in there i'm sure maybe a, a, a drummer might be able to play them they sounded a bit tough for me though i'm um, just trying to figure out how somebody with only four limbs could do it but there we've seen some wild drummers too so maybe somebody could play that with ease i don't know i'm not a drummer so things that sound complicated to me might not be <laughs> in reality um but yeah so i don't know every time i listen to it though i was expecting something along the lines of i don't know there's really not many examples of bands that use two drum kits. Uh, and usually when they do, there's a lot of overlap there. I think The Ocean at one time had two drummers, but I think the one song we listened from there, uh, from whatever album they had those two drummers on, I, uh, I had mentioned I was expecting some more drumming complexity, but that this didn't happen. They ended up playing a lot of the same thing in order to create a bigger sound. It was used for the volume of two drummers more so than the intricacy that eight percussive limbs could bring. And that's, I think that's where I kind of get let down here. We basically have two drummers here, and I don't really feel like we have any benefit of having two drummers. We do have the timbre addition. The acoustic drum kit does sound different than the electronic, but not in any way that I really think added too much. But I'm going to wrap this segment up just saying that it's possible this is a song that focuses more on melody and harmony, and maybe there are more complex rhythmic ideas on other tracks. I, of course, don't want to judge an entire band off of one song, so I'm just going to leave that there. Um, is there anything else I wanted to bring up? I don't think so. Um, there's no lyrics to this. Uh, the only thing that normally we would add here is uh, how I approach this song, what it means to me, and I'm just going to reiterate what I said earlier. It feels very sneaky, very mysterious, but there's also a lot of intensity to it. I kind of got the idea of like sneaking through uh, a, a dark apartment or warehouse or something. Uh, there's something, you know, there, there's, there's a risk to the whole thing. Maybe it's time-based, maybe there's something on the line, they have to get this done this one time, and so... It is tense, it is alarming, but it's also very light and and careful. But there is danger on the outskirts. And that's sort of what I kind of pictured, was like some Mission Impossible cat burglar mix right there. 
Um, and that's what it feels like to me. I'm curious how other people interpreted this. What kind of feelings or emotions, atmosphere, stories did you feel while listening to this track? Um, but I do appreciate the overall thing here. We don't get to listen to too much classical here, and this is a nice way of bringing the classical sound to a very modern audience, not just with the electronic drum kit, but also the whole concept of how the groove is written. I think there's a lot of elements on this that feel very modern despite using traditional instrumentation. So I greatly enjoyed this. I don't usually pull <laughs> reactions off to the side, but, uh, you know, usually that's something I do during live streams. I'd be like, oh, I like that. I need to look into it more and I'll, I'll put a bookmark on my desktop. But I did that for this one because I do need to check out more of uh, DZOB. I don't know how to pronounce that. If anyone can uh, give me some information about that too, let me know. When I did a YouTube search for it, all it kept coming, because I was looking for DZOB interview. Because the interview would say like, oh, this is this person from this band. I'd be like, oh, that's how you pronounce it. But it kept coming up with job interviews, which, I mean, yeah, maybe, but that's not what I typed. I even tried the uh, quotation mark thing that uh, usually works with Google. I don't know if YouTube um, has that filter in, but if you put quotations around something on a, in a web search, it usually finds that specific phrase. That didn't work for me either. So again, like I said at the beginning... It was tough for me to, to find a, a pronunciation of the band. Anyways, though, these are my thoughts on Dzob's 6-8, The Avalanches in the Rye. Totally forgot about that title. It means nothing to me. That is word salad. If anyone has some thoughts about that, per particularly pertaining to the music, too, let me know. I, I don't. Like I said, that, that phrase means nothing to me, uh, aside from the music or even alongside it. But uh, yeah, those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Did you enjoy it? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about it that you'd like to add to the conversation. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today, but I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. As usual, we're going to continue on with this week's theme of uh, mid-year roundup, looking at some of your favorite songs that have come out in 2024 so far. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.